Hi, I'm Richard Manor, International Guest Artistic Director for Joico. Welcome to Joico Education On Demand, your online source of education and salon classes 24-7. So today I'm going to be teaching the bespoke bob. Classic bobs can be sometimes a little difficult to master and a little conservative, but today I wanted to work on something that's classic, versatile and very simple in approach and technical. So this is the bespoke bob, a modern take on a classic bob. Let's get started. Okay, so for the partings and sections for the bespoke bob, we started working with a radial section from the top of the head to the top of the ear. So we're separating the back from the front. And then we worked a triangle section from that point to just above the occipital bone through the back. And then we worked another triangle section from that same point on the sides to about one and a half to two inches behind the hairline. So what you're creating from the top, as you can see, is a diamond section, with the front being a little wider than the back because, because we're gonna use this part of the technique as a guideline, which you'll see towards the end. And the reason why we've worked this sectioning pattern through the top is because we're gonna disconnect the top by working a inverted layering. Also, we've just taken a section through the front to the corner of the brows to isolate the fringe, which will give us an option to layer the fringe if you wanna work a little bit more of a shorter fringe, or we can keep it longer. And the reason why it's called bespoke bob, because it's all about suitability. It's all about bespoking or tailoring the cut to the client or model that you're working on. So bespoke basically means suitability. Okay, so we're gonna start working the back area, one finger depth, and working this square by point cutting. The good thing is you don't have to take uh, too many sections because the hair's fine. If the hair was very thick, you could subdivide and take sections through this area. You can use your comb or your fingers. I'm just using one finger depth just to have that control of the hair and making sure it's square behind the ear. Now, before I carry on, I want to make sure that we're happy with the balance and make sure that it's connecting through towards the desired length around the front. So I'm just gonna use my comb now just to have that zero elevation and get rid of any kind of graduation that might be hanging underneath the guide. And by point cutting, it just gives us a really nice textured perimeter. Even though it's gonna be solid, it's, it's shallow point cutting. So it's not reducing too much weight. It's still maintaining the weight, but just giving us a really natural perimeter. A good pro tip is to leave the second side longer rather than the first side otherwise you're gonna have to go back and cut the first side again and keep going shorter which you don't want to do. Okay so just check the balance with that. Make sure we're completely happy by taking little bits on either side. Okay so now we're gonna put some layering through this back area and the reason why we're gonna do this is we want a little bit more of a shape through this area, uh, but we don't want to take away from the solidness through the perimeter. So the way we're going to layer the hair is by taking a section, like so, parallel to the diagonal back section, okay? Combing it out parallel, and then working from that corner internally. So you're not cutting that corner because that corner actually is the corner of your perimeter, you're using that as a guide keeping your fingers parallel to the diagonal back section and working that internally a little bit shorter. Direct everything up to that stationary. So you're maintaining most of that length through the very perimeter and the edge and just point cutting with the stationary guideline. So there's not really too much that's gonna come off these next couple of sections. So I'm gonna just elevate everything up to that stationary. Whatever reaches, great. Whatever doesn't, just leave out and work with that point cutting technique. So you're forming a very basic long layering through this back area that will give us a really cool, interesting shape as it dries. So as I comb that flat, you'll still notice that we have a solid square line through the perimeter when you over direct that back. And you can always just make sure. And then you'll notice there's a little bit of layering that sits just above that, and that when it's dry will give us a little bit more movement through that area. Okay, gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. But what's great now is we have two 
we have two guidelines. We've got the guideline from the center and we're connecting it to the guideline in the corner. So we just elevate that out. We're not over directing, just out and holding our fingers. There's the guideline, we're connecting those two. Okay, now before I carry on, I wanna check for balance. So just pull both sides out, make sure we're happy exactly with the length that it's at. Okay, a little bit longer on this side. That's why it's important to keep your sections really clean so you can follow through and see exactly what side is longer and then adjust it accordingly so you have a nice balanced shape. It's really, really important you check for balance but before you move on because this is what's gonna really set you up for, for the next section. It's gonna be the guideline that you can work from. Okay, so we're just gonna subdivide this into two sections parallel to the diagonal back because what we're gonna do is firstly connect through the perimeter and then we're gonna put a very basic layering through this side area just to make sure that we're connecting it from the back area. And you'll see what I mean once I start layering the hair. But before we layer it, let's firstly connect the perimeter. Okay, now, really important point here, keep the head at natural fall. Again, you can use your fingers if you like, or you can use the comb. If you can use the comb, you use the comb as a guide to cut square. Tap, top of the ear, bottom of the ear, so you're allowing for that jump, and then you work that square. Now you'll notice because I'm tapping around the ear, it's just a little bit longer there, which is totally fine because when that's dry, it's gonna jump. If you just cut the hair without tapping, it will leave a little scoop, a little hole through this area, which you don't want. You want a really nice solid blunt line all the way through. So I'm gonna check that guide one more time. Make sure the hair's at natural fall and use the back area as a guide. So putting the comb in, there's my back area. Okay, we're gonna tap here, tap there, and then work that straight line all the way through. And the reason why we've also subdivided the hair into two sections is, is because if you made a mistake, at least you have another section to work with and maybe leave it a little bit longer if you've gone too short. So we're just gonna comb that through and follow the exact same guideline all at natural fall. Everything's combed at natural fall and zero elevation. Have a look at this. It's a little bit longer over the ear, okay? Because we tapped at the top and through the bottom. So it gives us a little bit more length to play with and then we cut that across. When that's completely dry, we'll just tidy that up if we have to. But a lot of the times you don't because it's gonna jump because of the ear. Okay, you're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. So a really good pro tip is when you're checking for balance on both sides, is to grab hair from both sides, exactly at the same spot, and look away and just feel which side is longer. The more you do this, the more experience you'll get to notice exactly which side is longer much quicker. Sometimes when you look at something for so long, you can lose focus. Okay, so the next section, we're going to do clip away all the hair underneath because this is pretty much finished until it's dry. Okay, and this is where the bob gets interesting. It goes from being a classic bob to a modern bespoke bob. So we're gonna start with this top triangle section. We're gonna take a guideline, about half an inch wide. Okay, this is gonna be my guideline. And I'm gonna set myself up by taking another section and subdividing both sides, okay? Okay, so we've just subdivided the top section and we're gonna cut this square. Okay, this is gonna be the shortest point of the layering, okay? Now how short and how long you leave it is totally up to you, but just keep in mind this part of the technique is the shortest guide. Everything's gonna be directed over to this. Again, I'm gonna just cut this through, to make it a lot easier for me first, because I wanna point cut the hair. And when it's too long, it wraps around your fingers and becomes difficult. So now it's sticking up, it's a lot easier to point cut. And you wanna work that square. Okay, doing the exact same thing on the other side. Body position, elbow up, and then work point cutting. A square layer. 
And now we're gonna cross check both sides. Make sure we're happy with that square shape before we over direct everything back. Just a little bit right in the middle there. Now we just direct everything back. This whole section gets directed back. I'm gonna do it in two sections, just so we got more precise sectioning. So everything's gonna be directed back on this side and doing the exact same thing on the other side. So you're working a horizontal inversion. So everything's over directed and cut square, as you can see. So repeating the exact same method on the other side and cutting that square. Everything over directed to the stationary guideline. Okay, so what we've done, we've resectioned the front because we've cut that and left the same guideline in front of the radial. This is the same guideline that we just cut. And we're gonna use this as a guideline for the back now. So basically what we're gonna do, direct everything up to this point. So what we've done, we've directed everything back to that stationary and we're gonna direct everything forward to that stationary. So we're creating a horizontal inversion. So it goes from shorter to longer, shorter to longer. Now what's gonna happen by doing that is you're gonna have some of this hair hanging over the baseline. But that's totally fine because we can cut that afterwards. What I'm more focused on right now is this beautiful seamless layering that we're creating through the top. And when it's dry, you'll see how this layering pattern works. It's very, very interesting and very seamless. So now what we're doing is directing everything forward to that stationary guideline. Okay, let's make sure the distribution is even. There's my square line. Just cut that a little bit longer. Follow that guideline. And repeating that until all the hair is reached. And that's why we clip the underneath area so we don't disrupt that hair. And make sure you leave enough room between your fingers and the guideline so you don't cut yourself, especially when point cutting. Okay, and just cross check and make sure it's tidy on both sides. So when you, when you take the clips out from underneath and then you begin to comb the hair down, because of the over direction that we did, you see a lot of that hair hanging over. That's fine. Have a look at the layering though. The layering's up here. So when that falls, it's still gonna be layered compared to the length, but it's gradually layered. And that's where the disconnection is. So what we're gonna do is cut anything that hangs over the guideline because we wanna work with the bob shape. Okay, we're gonna start with the back first and just point cut right on that same baseline that we began with. Anything that's hanging over the guide just feel free to cut it. Be aware of the, the section that's coming back from around the ears. Don't cut that yet. It's not dry. We're gonna wait till it's completely dry before you cut that. See the ear? That's, that's the section around the ear. Just leave that for now. Okay. Okay, the last section is the fringe. With this fringe area, what I'm gonna do is firstly subdivide in the center and over direct it to natural fall. So it's connecting firstly to the base. And then we can slightly angle it. We've just left it a little bit longer. And then we're gonna have a look at it when it's dry and decide if we need to do any more to it. And this just gives you a safety net to keep it more length. Okay, exact same thing on the other side. Okay, so we've just finished the technique. We haven't finished the haircut. Once it's completely dry, we're gonna check the haircut and make sure it's absolutely perfect. But for now, we're gonna prep the hair with Defy Damage. We're gonna use this as a, a blow drying agent. It's the protective shield from Defy Damage. And we're gonna put maybe one and a half pumps, work it through the palms of our hands, and we're just gonna work that from mid lengths to ends. And this will give us a really nice sheen to the hair and protect it against the thermal which is the hair dry and the irons. Okay, so we're gonna to begin to blow dry the hair.
So this is the finished result that we have. As you can see, it looks classic all the way, like a classic bob, but it actually has layers internally and can be worn with a lot more texture if you wanted the option to. So the, the look itself is a versatile look, but we wanted to work with still a strong baseline and work with something a lot simpler. The way we've finished it is we've worked it a lot smoother and straighter, but again, you've got the versatility to wear it on the side with a little bit more texture and wave as well.